found on Twitter, at Psych by BMAC. Sean Mapes from half the shows here on the station can be found on Twitter, at Sean A. Mapes. And our man Johnny Belmer is back behind the glass. You can find him on Twitter, at Third Coast Johnny. You like that line, half the shows here at the station, Johnny? I saw you cackling a little bit there. Yeah, uh, I do. Sean, Sean is uh, now transforming into the hardest working man yes. in our industry. Welcome to the bullpen on <laughs> Mapes 97.5 and 92.5. <laughs> I mean, the, the the double-edged sword of that is they might add more shows to your your. Oh. You might be doing the whole the whole day at some point. So be careful what you wish. <laughs> Maybe if we do like some sort of telethon uh, I, donation I thing. Think <laughs> I did hear a rumor at one point, and I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but there was a rumor at one point that we might be doing like a 24-hour like straight. I don't know what that would include of us, but I'm going to guess Sean will produce 20 of 24 hours yeah, yeah, of, that, of, of, of that marathon. Sounds like so. a 12-hour stream for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take two hours. I think Johnny's got 30 minutes maybe. <laughs> maybe Cam Smith will come yeah. in for like 15 minutes. Yeah, don't want to work those guys too far. <laughs> but yeah. you, you'll get the other 20 hours. All right, uh, we uh, – Today, if if you if you don't follow uh, pro wrestling and sports entertainment, you might not know this. Obviously, Sean First does. First of all, what are you doing? I mean, Sean does. He's Mr. Sports Entertainment. Uh, but today is uh, day one of WrestleMania. It's uh, for the last few years been a two day um, a two day event, and tonight is night one. So we will definitely get into some WWE conversation coming up at one thirty. My buddy Kyle King, who will be doing a live stream on Twitch. On uh, his Twitch channel, we'll give you all those details uh, as the show goes on. But he will join us to talk about WrestleMania. And uh, I have a feeling there might be a few more wrestling topics that might find their way into the show, maybe during Mount Rushmore Plus One. Spoiler Whoa. alert. At 145, there might be some wrestling there as well. Uh, but right now, let's kick it off with uh, with the with the Astros, man. I just... It, it, I kind of felt good, you know, uh, coming off of uh, what we were talking about last. I think the... I don't remember how many games they had played. They played uh, two. They had played two. So we were coming Thursday, off Thursday, of, Friday. Right. We come. Week. So they were they were zero and two when we did the show last week, and Frombert had that six walk outing where they got crushed. But uh, Christian Javier. Pitched, yeah. So we were very well. we we were coming off. I mean, even though they lost, we were coming off a, a semi good feeling. At least that Christian Javier had looked good. This week, not as much because I mean, despite them giving us the silver lining by winning the series against the Toronto Blue Jays, they didn't go. Uh, into Arlington to face the the Rangers and get smacked in two and it's not even as close as that sounds. It was ten nothing. The Astros got a couple of meaningless runs there at the end to I guess make the score look closer. Not really. Uh, but Hunter Brown, man, like he was pretty good first start and then three innings, five earned runs, gives up eight hits, four walks, just absolutely crushed. Uh, he's obviously a, a, a part of a large uh, group of Astros pitchers that we had question marks that we thought could be you know really really good this season or you know we could go the other way like it did last night but uh your thoughts on hunter brown just man he he looked like second half hunter brown last night yeah i was gonna say it, it was a lot like what we saw last year not just in the second half but even the first half where he was kind of inconsistent where he would have a good start yeah followed up by yeah, he an faced absolute... the a's and dominate yeah and then, <laughs> then when he didn't face the a's it was not as great. Yeah, and so this was one of those, you know, the flip side of it where it's like, oof, this is this is some bad stuff. I mean, even the fir the first inning, getting out of there, uh, getting out of the first inning, having to throw 30 pitches, that already puts you – or 29. Right? But that puts you at a, like, oh, this is not going to be a good start. Yeah, you start talking, so it's like, well, maybe we can get four from Hunter Brown yeah, today. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe he works quickly in the second and – Oh, God. Well, it got worse from there. <laughs> Five runs in the second, including. I think this is what part. I mean, obviously, the Rangers part of it makes it sting. But I think part of it that makes it sting um, even more is the fact that part of that five run second inning is, you know, Adulis Garcia hitting a three run homer. Because I think he's probably. Would you say he's public enemy number one uh, amongst the Rangers uh, roster for Houston Astros fans? Because, I mean, him getting on the board with a three run bomb kind of at that point, I think probably making most feel, uh, fans feel like, okay, this game's over. We can go ahead and start looking ahead to Saturday. Yeah, exactly. I mean, him being the author of that makes it hurt even worse. Yeah, I would, I would say Gar Garcia won, and then Seager and Simeon, probably two and three. Yeah, order. Simeon for sure. Simeon, yeah, because Simeon got, got into with Maldi last year. Yeah, maybe Simeon two, Seager three, and then Evan Carter. Something about Evan Carter. <laughs> What is? I'll call him a hollow. What's it about Evan Carter? This guy. He's he's played what like 
20 games in his yeah, career. Yeah, and seven of them were against the Astros. <laughs> <laughs> well, eight now. Eight of them were against the Astros. Maybe, I, I'm just going to assume he went to Duke. Maybe, maybe, we, could put, maybe we could put Duke on Evan Carter. That would that'd be a reason why we could hate him. Ba -ba -ba. Although Astros prospect Joey Luperfito, who we had on the Killer Bees on, uh, I guess it was Thursday, he also went to Duke, so... Yeah, I know. He's gonna ha he's gonna have to earn our love after going to Duke. There, uh, did you find a college for Evan Carter? I, no, I didn't because he went straight from high school to to the league. Okay, there we go. Entitled, <laughs> entitled high school straight to the yeah. pros. He's twenty one years old. Something. That's why I hate him, man. <laughs> that, that, that's why I hate him. He's twenty one. <laughs> yeah, he's twenty one, man. He's only gonna get better, and he's already really damn good. So. I mean, I, I kind of just want to wipe away last night's game. Not that, you know, you can from the standings, but you're going to have games like this and you move on and hope that, I mean, you got J.P. France on the mound. I don't know. I mean, the first time through the rotation, he was, you know, inarguably the worst of the of the five. Yeah, I mean, but also first time through the rotation, they had the number one ERA in baseball. Yeah, they had, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the only guy besides him that struggled the first time through, I guess, would have been Fromber. Yeah. Uh, but France, I, I think, was probably the worst of the bunch. Do you have any faith that France gets the Astros back on the board and stops the bleeding here? Uh, maybe the Rangers got tired from <laughs> scoring all the runs. They got tired uh, from running around yeah. the bases well, and they're going to you know, pace the, themselves the Astros, The Astros have that thing where if they score 10 runs the next the That's next true. Game, they, they, really scored, they score none the yeah. next day. So. Maybe maybe that happens with the Rangers. I guess I guess, <laughs> that's, I guess that's my bright side. If you're looking for bright side here, like France wasn't great his first time out, but you're facing Sonny Gray today. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Sonny Gray, John Gray, and his ERA. I think I assume it's only one star, but twelve seventy twelve, yeah, twelve twenty seven. So not a great time for him in his first outing. So maybe the Astros bats can get on board, but man, I I don't. I, we did a segment on the Killer Bees, I guess it was Thursday, how their record at the time, 2-5, and five, now 2-6, and six, was fake. Because when you looked at a lot of the yeah. – basically, when you looked at anything else other than the overall record, like, they were positive in run differential. Yeah. Their, their ERA and their runs allowed were both, like, like five, fifth overall and sixth overall. And they were second in the league at home runs hit. Everything pointed to, like, okay, 2-5 and five is not real. But then 10-2 happens. Yeah, it, it was all their losses in – well, actually, in all their losses were kind of games where they – Astros played well, and then they had one inning normally pitched by a bullpenner uh, that actually, like, that cost them the game. That you can point to, yeah. and you're like, the seventh inning of this game was why they lost. The ninth inning of this game is why they lost. Like, you know, whether it's Presley, whether it's uh, – Hater was the author of – Hater yeah, some on of that. last Sunday – whether it's Abreu gave up three runs in his first outing, obviously we know the Parker Mashinsky. Uh, and he's no, <laughs> yeah, he's no longer on the roster. He got yes. sent back down to make so, room for JP France. So you can, you can look at all the losses before last night and be like, okay, like the Astros played well in this loss. They just lost, like you were saying, like the the, you felt better about them than the record showed. Last night's tough. Yeah, last, last, last night's especially a tough since one. it's in division against the team that eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah. Because I, I think I think part of the story that you know Astros fans, including myself, I don't know if you're a part of this as well, uh, have been telling ourselves this off. He's like, man, the Rangers' pitching staff sucks. Like, okay, great, their <laughs> offense is good, but the Astros are going to run away this yeah. division. They got guys like Cody Bradford running out. Yeah, there. and then and then they you you only score two runs, and the two runs you score as few as those runs are are completely meaningless because it was down. It was after you were down to nothing. So the stories that we were telling ourselves about the Rangers and you know, uh, you know their offense is great, but it's not going to be able to overcome their pitching. And then you go and lose ten two with one of the guys on the mound. Um, I think a lot of people would have said advantage Astros with the starting pitching matchup yeah. last night. And then you lose 10-2. It's like, well, maybe we need to reevaluate about where the you know Astros v. Rangers is right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely at this point of the season, the Rangers have come out come out really swinging as opposed to the Astros. Like, I mean, like we said, like some of that record is fake. But there's when you you know pull it up on on Sports Reference, it's two and six versus five and two. Yeah, <laughs> it's that, that's it's, it's, man. I they, they need. I mean, I I have every faith that they're going to turn it around. I, I this is not me. This is not they're putting only down four in the division. Yeah, so. <laughs> hundred and 
sixty, no, one hundred fifty something. Like that. Well, well, what is their? Pay, what are they on pace to win though, Sean? I mean, they're only on pace to. We're, we're on pace to lose that bet that we made at La Burge. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. yeah. Was it ninety two and a half? Ninety two and a half. We yeah, need, we need uh, for those who want to follow along with us. Uh, Sean, uh, myself, and Joe George put a team bet together when we were in La Burge for Astros and over ninety two and a half wins on the season, which. I, I still think they get, they get there, but I, I'm feeling you know a little less confident by the day. And then we also they need put 91 on, more wins. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah saying. to get over. Yeah. And then we also put that, that we also put a bet on the Astros to win the American League, which one, one step at a time. Unfortunately, the Rangers are also in the American <laughs> League right now, so maybe we and can the get, Yankees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, but the Blue Jays are too. <laughs> damn it, the Astros sort of dominated the Blue Jays, won that series two to one. Um, We'll carry some of this conversation over the other side, but uh, let's let's talk about a, a pitcher who hasn't sucked because Hunter Brown was total ass last night. But Javier, uh, Christian Javier, too many walks in that in that series clinching a win against the Blue Jays. I think he had five, and we I crushed Fromber last week for having six. So I don't want to completely dismiss those walks. Uh, but he had a great first start against the Yankees. Then he follows it up against the Blue Jays and goes five scoreless. So obviously, you, you would hope that he would. I think he only had five strikeouts in five innings. You'd hope he'd maybe go a sixth inning. You'd hope he have a few more strikeouts, a few less walks. But uh, I think all signs, if we're doing stock up, stock down, which we might do a little bit more in this in this in the next segment. I mean, clearly, I think stock up on Christian Javier. He lost weight over the offseason. The fastball is up in velocity, and the early results have been great. Yeah, yeah. the The first game was probably the best, uh, you know, best Christian Javier performance that you could reasonably ask for. I mean, obviously, this guy's been part of no hitters, so you know, he, yeah, he has, at Yankee Stadium <laughs> in the World Series, yeah, he, he has. I guess there is a another level of performance <laughs> yeah. that he can go, but you know, the yeah, a uh, reasonable no hitter in the World Series, yeah, but a reasonable like the first game, six innings, uh, four hits, one walk, six strikeouts, like boom. Love it. That that's great. Last uh the most recent start against Toronto was kind of the what you would expect is like the median start for him, like kind of the average. Yeah, if that's like, the start. median I mean or yeah. the a, the average I should say like the average good start. Okay. Like that okay. the average start that's not the complete. Yeah, because he only went five innings. Five Obviously innings. there's some walks in there. Yeah, but that is like a you know, through his turn the rotation, you're like, we got it. Yeah, that was a solid Javier. Uh, performance so yeah I mean the stock has to be up um, for him because he was the guy who had a lot of questions and last year last you feel time like he's him, answered those questions or you, you I mean I don't we can't say two starts in like, yeah, like he's gonna, completely erased all doubt but where, where are you and your confidence him is he rebuilt most of it they lost last he's, year he's rebuilt most of it but partly because I thought a lot of last year was him Especially late in the year, just running out of gas. Yeah, because he was in the WBC. WBC, first full year starting. Right. The, it, there's a lot of things you can go. And it's like, oh, and his fastball velocity is down. Huh. wonder why. Uh, yeah, there <laughs> might be a cause and effect there. Yeah, from so I was I was already kind of primed to believe uh, in a Javier bounce back and through two starts. You know, again, if we're going to hand wave a lot of the bad stuff with the Astros saying it's early in this season, we can't fully be like two starts. Boom, we're back. Uh, I, think, I think what this says is we need to go back to LaBerge and Lake Charles and put a Cy Young, Cy Young bet down on it. Hey, Johnny Bellman, are you in? Are you going to you go in with us if we uh, make a, a Christian Javier Cy Young bet? Will you go in with us, split it up, me, you, and Sean? I actually, I actually like that. Yeah, I would. I'll go in with you. Okay. All right. I think uh, we, we got a team bet. We'll, uh, we'll have to look up the odds during the break. Galan uh, George will be going to LaBerge. Uh, oh, or soon? A couple weeks from now. The 24th. Okay. All right. Are you going with them? Yes. Okay. Well, then, yeah, maybe we will get down a Christian Javier yeah. uh, AL Cy Young Vin, award. Venmo is open, Johnny Bell. <laughs> You just yeah, just send them money. Like this has nothing to do with the yeah, Trust me, I'm good for it. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> Sean is working 95 percent of the shows here at the station. He needs some help. Like I, I'm not saying this is uh, for one dollar a day just for a the tip? cup for the for the for the price of a cup of coffee. You can support a Sean. Should, I, should I ask for tips on the on the back yeah, of my laptop? Yes, yeah, put a sticker on my there. There you go. Yeah, put <laughs> or your have, uh... the, have the guitar case open. <laughs> All right, on the other side of the break, we, we will come back and talk more Astros, uh, get into some stock up, stock down on some of the hitters. We spent most of the first segment talking about pitching performances, but let, let's talk about some of the good and some of the bad for these Astros hitters when we get back on the other side of the break. And if you have any thoughts 
on what we're talking about with the Astros. Later, we're going to get into the Rockets, the Texans, and of course, we will take your WrestleMania calls if you have any thoughts on on that as well. Give us a call on the HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. The bullpen will return at ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 in three minutes. You're listening to The Bullpen on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Uh, Sean, Sean Mapes, find yes. him on Twitter at Sean A. Mapes. Do you know whose uh, theme this is, Sean A. Mapes? This. Uh, Don't. This I mean, if you if you miss this. Our tribal chief. Thank you. Uh, if you'd miss the theme music of our tribal chief, acknowledge him. He is the billion dollar draw. He is the one in God mode. I would I would be quite disappointed if you missed the theme no, of uh, no. the Tribal Chief on this, the day of WrestleMania on night the, one. Yeah, no. I, uh, I mean just sports uh, entertainment, Sean. I on, wouldn't expect es- you to miss it. There's two on, nights of WrestleMania? Yes. Yes. Oh goodness. Come on. Your tone needs to reflect the idea that there's <laughs> only two nights of WrestleMania, John Belmer. You can find those terrible opinions on Twitter at Third Coast Johnny. <laughs> Only two nights of yes. There's two nights of WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania, Johnny. You think um, the mania can only be contained <laughs> to one night? You got the Rock involved. You think it's one night? Yeah, I didn't think it was two nights. No. I don't know why you'd need two nights for well, it. Well, it actually. Well, I'm not going to get into the full story, but it started because of the pandemic, and then they just they they kept it. Uh, but um, yeah, I, th- I think later in the show, uh, Sean and I, I think Johnny's got a wrestling theme music challenge for Sean and I. I. I Look, I'm I'm feeling optimistic. I've watched pro wrestling for a long time, but he is he's not called sports entertainment Sean for nothing. So uh, I, I'm gonna have my work cut out to see if I can beat you in this head to head uh wrestling theme music challenge. But let's get back into the Astros again if you have any thoughts on what we're talking about here with the Astros, uh later Rockets, Texans. Give us a call on the HRP list for line seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. So uh some of these Astros hitters we we spent the last segment talking about pitchers. Uh, stock up, suck down on these Astros hitters. Stock up, two guys in particular, uh, Yonner Diaz and, uh, and and Jeremy Pena. Uh, both guys, well, Yonner's actually hitting 400 right now with a 1,000-plus OPS. Pena just below 400 at 393. What a bum. With a 1,000-plus OPS. Uh, Jeremy Pena also has two home runs, and that was obviously a big part of last season. Like, oh, my God, like the, the daily tracker of, it's been this many days. It's almost like the workplace, uh, yeah. the sign of the workplace this many days since our last accident. We should have had one of those up for this many days since a Jeremy Pena home run. And it was a lot because the last one was like sometime early in July. 
Uh, but he's had two home runs this season and the slugging percentages there. And then Yonder's picked up right where he left off. Um, I, I guess you would probably say you feel more, far more confident in the sustainability of Yonder Diaz continuing this. But your, your thoughts on what we've seen from Yonder and from uh, Jeremy Pena? Yonder Diaz is kind of any 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 reservations that you might have had. And what, what was the reservation? Where being the, like his 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 chasing pitches and not taking walks. A little bit of chasing pitches, yes. A little bit of that, and a little bit of the kind of book being out on him after his rookie sure. year, and the idea of now that he has to be the starting catcher, he has to prepare to be the starting catcher. Maybe the hitting uh, side of his game tails off a little bit because you know he's. Not just DH. Yeah, because like last he was. year I think half his starts were at DH. Well, I, I don't know the exact total, but a lot of his starts a, were at he DH. Yes. Yeah. So there, there was a little bit of just like a, you know, should should there be a little bit of a tail off because of the extra workload that he's having uh, to endure? And there has been games where he's DH'd uh, this year too, and Caratini has uh, been behind the dish. And that's big because I wasn't sure when the season started, like, because he's obviously not gonna. I mean, even the most active catchers are going to catch like 130 maybe games, like yeah. on the high side. Yeah. That's on the high side. More likely to be like 110 to 120. Yeah, you know, on on the high side. So the question was like, you know, how would he be used? Because I, I didn't have faith that they would be willing to play him at first base on his days off from catcher. Because that seems to like be what a lot of like Buster Posey and Joe Maurer they eventually yeah. transitioned to first base in their career. So it's nice to see that they're still finding spots in the lineup for Yonder. I mean, how could you not? His bat's so good. He's hitting 400. But, but <laughs> obviously, coming off the years with Dusty Baker, we can't always depend on logical thinking when it comes to certain players. So I'm glad to see that they're still having him involved uh, in in a big way in the lineup, even when he's not catching. Yeah, and, and he already has kind of, again, any any doubts that you might have had, you're kind of like, no, oh, okay, this is this is kind of kind of continue, not uh, hitting four hundred. Yeah. Although maybe hitting four, no, uh, <laughs> not hitting four hundred. Should we have a four hundred watch? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we. I mean, Ted Williams, you're on notice. Ted, you're, you're, the frozen head of Ted Williams is on notice. Yonder yeah. Diaz on today, April sixth, the night <laughs> night one of WrestleMania is still hitting four hundred. Still now, if, if he he's still hitting four hundred at Money in the Bank <laughs> or SummerSlam. That, I think I, I think clearly, that's when we that's when we tune in. Johnny, do you know when SummerSlam is? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I should just check in with Johnny throughout the day if he knows random things wrestling, about wrestling. Throw yeah. a wrestling question yeah, in. Yeah. It, Money in the bank, is that a real pay-per-view, Johnny, or did I make that up? Uh you made it up. No, that's real. Oh, see, okay. see, Johnny just doesn't know sports entertainment. I I'm not I, I do know sports is, is entertainment, busy? but I don't know uh whatever wrestling is. I don't know if I can call it a sport. <laughs> wow. That's why it's sports entertainment. Okay, anyway. <laughs> the, the views and opinions of John Belmer do not necessarily jo rep represent those of ESPN 97. John Fox. Belmer, stock down. Stock down. Yonder Johnny Diaz. Belmer, stock Yonder up. Diaz, st uh, stock So, up. like, obviously, like you said, he's not going to hit 400 all season. Uh. Though we'll check back in again <laughs> at SummerSlam. Um, but I, we had this question came up on the bees. I think it was on Friday. Like, do you think he's got the upside of possibly being the best offensive catcher in baseball? I mean, there's some names in there like Adley Rushman and Will Smith. William Contreras in Milwaukee has been really good, but where do you see Yonder's upside at the plate? I, I think he's right up there with those guys. I, I think he's got I, more power than those guys. I, he definitely does, and I think that I, I it was something that I realized, I, I don't know, probably Thursday last week, Wednesday last week, where I was, where I was thinking about the uh, the whole, obviously the whole drama from last year with Yonder Diaz, this guy should play more. And I was, I was asking uh, – I was asking Paul and Joe, like, when do you think that that question will go away every time he has a highlight at the plate where it's like half of Astros Twitter is be like, oh, can't believe Dusty didn't play this dude. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no. And I was like, I think it will peter out like in May, you know. Okay, so right and around then, the time but, of uh, backlash. Yes, okay, of gotcha. course. And then, um, <laughs> and then I was like, although – when the All Star teams get announced, they'll probably bounce right oh, back. Oh my god! Because he's yeah. gonna be—he's you know what? Likely to be an All Star. Okay, so it's not gonna go away by then. But also, like into you know, I, I can't remember exactly when these awards are announced. But like, if he gets a Silver Slugger award, yeah, it's November. gonna it's gonna yeah, it's gonna come all the way back again. So I think best case, like Christmas, we can finally put. The, the, the I think Yonder Diaz, Dusty Baker jokes. I aside. think it'll it'll tail off and then have peaks. You know, it'll be like peak, like a peak moment of like 
where there's a day where everyone's like, can you effing believe that this guy <laughs> <laughs> is that going to be the most overused like semi joke in, in for for Houston sports Twitter over the next um, year? Either that one or the the flip side of that where he goes, thank you, Dusty. Yeah, yeah, Dus yeah. Dusty I, Baker did say, "We'll thank him." Yeah, so. I, I don't know when that's going to happen, but maybe it'll happen. I, I mean, I'm, sarcastically, I'm on. thanking him every, every <laughs> night. He, every night he's on, he gets on base, and scores a run. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, maybe that could be like Jeremy has thank the "What's Dusty. wrong with the spot as lineup bit. Maybe that could be our bit. We just we just we just tweet out, "Thank or, you, Dusty." Every or night. how. Um, how Brian McTaggart has like oh a, the youth uh, is served or yeah like a little uh, catchphrase for every home run that gets hit. Yonder Diaz is just Yonder Diaz. Period. Thank you, Dusty. Thank you, Dusty. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. So the other guy we mentioned, Jeremy Pena. Um, maybe uh, there was some talk about him messing with his batting, uh, his swing during during the off season. I mean, I, I hate to ask the question like, is he fixed after you know seven games? But you, I mean. But there, in the doc, in in the doc, it does say. Is I, I I know because I'm going to ask the question. I, I hate. To, uh, look, you caught on to something here. <laughs> I, I'm I'm putting this off as yeah. I hate to ask it, but I'm totally going to ask it. I'm mean, definitely going to ask it. But when you look at Pena, like his power uh, disappearance never made sense last year because I mean, look at Pena. He's not a guy that looks like he wouldn't have power. Yeah. I mean, he, he, yeah. he's a, he's a he's a he's a big guy of both size and he's well built. Um. There was no reason other than maybe a broken swing why his power would disappear. I think his rookie year he hit 21, maybe 22 home runs. I think it was 21. But I, I don't see any reason if he's been able to maybe fix his swing like was talked about during spring training and is able to, you know, just as his maturation as a player, start laying off some of those breaking balls he used to chase on the outside. I don't see any reason why a guy built like him couldn't return to 20 home run form. Is that fair? No, that that's very fair. It's just about, I mean, it it sounds. What do the rest of the stats look like? No, no, it's it's a, as far as him, you know, that power coming back. It's as simple as he just needs to hit the ball in the air instead of on the ground. Yeah, that yeah. Was, that was a lot of his issues. That the the ball just it wasn't. May, that does sound like swing, like because the part of the talk about uh, what he was doing in swing was specifically working on elevating the ball, like trying to get yeah. just under it to create the backspin to get lift. Yeah, and the, and that's I mean, two home runs in what eight games? Eight as games, a, yeah. as opposed to zero home runs over in the entire second 70 half, seventy or yeah. however many he played. So, uh, yeah, there. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know if he's fixed. I know you would hate to ask that. I, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask it. But if you want to, it's if ridiculous. You, to if ask. you want to run with the question, who am I to stop you, Sean? Uh, I I would say if you want to answer if he's fixed, call seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. I'd say he's not quite all the way fixed now, but the signs are promising that he will no longer be Adam Everett uh, <laughs> at the plate. Oh <laughs> he's, my god! He'll at least be a oh. valued member of this Adam lineup. Everett. Adam, like, Adam Everett used to. I don't know, like, I don't know who else I would. Just, I don't know who else at the station has like an irrational hate of a certain player, but there was definitely. A, a time in my life as an Astros fan where I had an irrational hate of Adam Everett. It was mostly because back in the day when you didn't have, you know, uh, a DH to play with and you had uh, Everett Osmus pitcher spot. It's like, God, we're playing a six inning game every single day. It was so frustrating. A third of the lineup. Or yeah. Or I, pitchers. Yeah. Probably not one of my finest moments, but I was actually at the game where Carlos Lee ran into Adam Everett and broke his leg and I stood up and cheered. Yeah, that's probably not wow. my finest moment. Wow. Yeah, I know. Did you, I'm, did you cheer I'm, when uh, I'm, I'm Matt a, Schaub got hurt too? <laughs> no, no, I'm a bad person. I, but I'll wow. admit it. You know, that's that's wow. that, right. that, that's what that's the difference credit, between the, between the two you. psychopaths yeah. and the people who are redeemable. Because I will admit my faults. Johnny Bilmer shaking that, his head. At I mean, me. that is the first first step to. Uh, to redemption is, yeah you know. submitting our faults yeah uh before we go to break and john belmer completely disavows himself uh <laughs> of of knowing me uh verlander getting to start tomorrow in sugarland unless plans have changed and i haven't heard about um sounds like they're probably going to give him two rehab starts before he gets called up so uh not when we do the show next week but maybe the week after although i think that might be one of the weeks we're taking off so we might not get to talk cool. about verlander starting for a little bit but um I mean, first blush at the looking at the rotation, it sounds like they're not going to go six man rotation right away because they have too many days off coming up. Yeah, and they don't want to space out their guys. Uh, but who do you think gets removed from the rotation? I mean, the the obvious first choice would have been, I think, well, just move the fifth starter. But Ronald Blanco just threw a freaking no hitter. 
So, I mean, maybe it's dependent upon what he does on Sunday. He pitches against the Rangers. But, I mean, is it Blanco? Is it France? Like, who are you moving from the, from yeah, the rotation? We'll, we'll have a couple more turns, or I guess two more turns. Two more turns through, through yeah. Yeah, so there, there will be more information than one start, which is a no-hitter. Uh, <laughs> are you saying that's a small sample size? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying if he throws another one, then, I, then he's safe. I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> look, I'm just saying Ronald Blanco is on pace to give up no hits this season. That's, yeah, all, if, I'm, that's all I'm saying. If it goes Don Larson on. <laughs> uh, no, I I think that it's it's between France and uh, and Blanco. It, it will depend on how Blanco follows it up. And correct me if I'm wrong, but does does Blanco have relief experience? Because yeah, that uh, that could well, be that could be part of it. Yeah, because you would expect one of them, whoever gets moved out, is not going down to AAA. They're they're going to the bullpen to help with some of the middle relief that's been such an exactly. issue. Exactly. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't fully walk that out. But no, yes, I know. It, no, I, I know I'm where saying you're that, at. that whoever gets dem- whoever loses their spot in the rotation, I still want them on the big league roster. Yeah, I'm trying to remember because Renault Blanco got playing time last year, but I think it was just as a fill-in a, starter. A starter. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I mean, we can obviously look it up on Baseball Reference during the break, yeah. but yeah, I, I I don't see a huge difference I, there. But I would just say that whoever you know, because a lot of it is comfort when it comes to. Uh, not just the and maybe the, maybe that one of those guys if the if the question is are they comfortable as being okay. a true reliever okay you got the answer yeah so uh, Ronel Blanco pitched seventeen games last year and only started seven of them oh and the year before he did not he pitched seven games again these are tiny samples but he didn't pitch uh, he didn't start a single one of them okay so he so, has plenty of relief so experience. yeah that as far as, because the, the the process of warming up for starter versus a uh, reliever is is different. Uh, starter, you have more time. And yeah, it's very yeah. it's very easy, and it's regimented. You know exactly when it's going to be. Exactly. And maybe the answer is if if you don't want to change up the routine like massively, you just treat them as like a two inning piggyback to Javier, who you don't yeah. ex- you don't expect to go deep in the game. That that could be another. Or Hunter Brown, who obviously went three innings last night. Yeah, where yes, you can you can do something like that where they're long relievers but that you come in kind of with a plan like you kind of have know that okay this is my day to yeah pitch. Es- especially especially with the back end of this rotation where it's like either france or hunter brown or even javier like chances are they're not going to go deep no in any of these. no so, you're not they're not they're not going seven so yeah for that, sure. that that could be the that could be the fix but yeah i mean the whoever loses their spot in the rotation to me is uh, they're still going to be pitching in houston yeah absolutely all right on the other side of the break uh we got to talk about uh maybe do a eulogy for the houston rockets uh uh, we had some hopes last time we were on these airwaves on Saturday. We had some hopes that the Houston Rockets would find a way to continue the push and get into the uh, NBA play-in tournament, but uh, it's gone pretty much completely downhill since then. So we will talk about the Rockets on the other side of the break. ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5.
Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Bullpen on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. <laughs> ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5. I don't know if part of Sean's uh, take there on Jay Uso, who you hear the theme music of right now, <laughs> the, got out over air, but rat. you're calling him a rat? Yeah, he you're stole not... the belt. <sighs> he stole the belt from the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, last I mean year. That, that that was a while that was ago. Bush League. There's cameras all over the place. How'd they let that happen? Ah, oh. oh, man. Yeah, wait. Well, Just smart. because the re- <laughs> the ref wasn't looking. <laughs> Don't they have replay? <laughs> they do, but you know, it's look like uh, uh, unchallengeable play. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not reviewable. That's the problem. Like you know, progress. You know, Ford Progress had already been, you know, the quarterback was in the grass, <sighs> Ford Progress. You know, these things are unchallengeable. It's disgusting. It is. You know, like some someday we're going to get uh, robo uh, umpires for <laughs> WWE. I, I hope we do. It. And I'm then right. we're going to get the correct calls. We don't have Man. to worry about these but controversies you know what? anymore. You know what? It won't matter come Sunday when Cody Rhodes finishes the story. <sighs> that, the disrespect of our tribal chief will not stand on this show. Uh, I mean, I, I clearly I know Johnny Belmer's got a strong take about who wins the main event of night two of WrestleMania. Johnny, who are you picking in that main event match on night two of WrestleMania? Uh, Booker T. <laughs> good, yeah, good call. Good call. All right, before we the get five in- time becomes the six time. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, five time, five time, five time. Uh, before we get into the Rockets, uh, Sean, tell the people about where they can uh, come out and see us on Monday. On Monday, you can come out and see us. At um, bu- 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 oh, the Galan George. Hey, Galan yeah. George. Well, I was gonna say you do that show, but you do basically all the shows. Yes, so. a- and the Killer Bees, a show I do not do. We'll be broadcasting. You want to do it on Monday? Uh, no, oh. I'll pass. Uh, <laughs> we'll be broadcasting from the Space Cadet Bar. Join the guys, and then watch the national championship game and. Astros Rangers, probably Astros Rangers, and also the national championship. Yeah, because the national championship game. game will come on at eleven oh two p.m. <laughs> Our time, yeah. Old man B Mac yep. complaining about the start time. On Monday, they will have a special burger and beer combo deal, bucket specials, and victory beers for the Astros game. But now, what are victory beers, Sean? Thank you for asking. Well, if you arrive by the third inning and the Astros win, aka get a victory. You will get. Wait, that needs to be clarified. <laughs> you will get. It's not in the copy, but I thought. Okay, I thought I'd right. clarify right. it for you. Oh, thanks. Um, you will get a victory beer. So Astros win. You show up before the third inning or by the third inning, you get a free victory victory beer. So make sure to get to the Space Cadet on Monday to hang out with us and stay for the Astros and also the national championship game. If you can stay up to one a.m. Uh, just going to finish off the, the old man should, take. Should, should the listeners be offended? You felt the need to explain what he, victory he, meant? No, he <laughs> asked. He asked what a victory beer it was. So I, I had to explain it to BMAC. I, I was setting him up. Because I, I think that is part of the copy. Like, what what is a victory beer? What, is a, what is a victory beer is literally in the copy. <laughs> I was just I was being cheesy and setting him up. Uh, That's just good teamwork. See, we're a yes. tag team here. So, yeah, come out, watch the Astros, and watch the national championship game oh. that tips off 30 minutes before last call. So Fromber would be on the mound for that. Are we feeling like Fromber could get us a victory beer? I mean, he's a bit he's a bit uh, Jekyll and Hyde. What what happened the last time Fromber Valdez pitched against he, the Rangers? Oh my god. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. god. Maybe maybe it'd be a drown our sadness beer. Do they have the drown our sadness beer? Oh, I hope yeah. UConn wins at least. Yeah, everyone's rooting for that. I mean, Dan Hurley so uh, so easy to get behind. <laughs> Can we get victory beers for a UConn win? <laughs> I feel, yeah, I feel good about our chances for victory beers for UConn. All right, let's get into the Houston Rockets. Um Unfortunately, uh, back-to-back losses to the Warriors and the uh, Heat. And before that, they lost, uh, what, to the Mavericks? And who was the other? They T-Wolves. Had, T-Wolves, right. So They haven't they haven't won a game since the last time we've been on. God, so they're we're, we're, we're the, the, the problem. Time. We're the problem, or, clearly. We're uh, the solution. Yeah, we could be. Uh, but it looks, I mean, not math. technically, mathematically, their season isn't. <laughs> isn't over the yet. warriors magic number is one yeah it, i mean it's over <laughs> i i just don't want to get well you know well actually by someone on twitter like well actually they went out like yeah i get yeah. it but i'll it, wait i'll wait three days and then be <laughs> right. wait three days yeah. and be right uh but uh uh, some interesting comments from Ime Yudoka, the uh, the Rockets uh, coach, after the loss to the Warriors, calling out his team uh, for being soft. Let's hear from the Rockets head coach right now. It, it looked like the moment was too big for a lot of players out there. 
saw it look like deer in headlights a little bit. Uh, you look soft or scared, and one or the other, and that's two poor, two bad things for a lot of our guys to have, and uh, didn't rise up to the moment like I thought we would. So, uh, I mean, let's start there. Is that a fair comment by uh, Rockets head coach Ime Udoka? Uh, I thought I thought that they were they were. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to say watching it on at your home on TV that they look scared <laughs> or soft. But, yeah, because he's obviously seeing them in the huddle. He's seeing them before the game. Yeah, he's looking them in their eyes. Right. Um, but I, I, I will say that uh, I'll agree with the first part, that the moment did look too big for them. And more so, the moment looked uh, perfectly sized or a little too small for the Warriors. For a team he, who's won four titles. Yeah, yeah, especially the dude that really sends you home is Clay Thompson. Clay, just... Clay, all the talk have been like, oh, Clay's washed, Clay's this, yes. Clay's that. And yeah, Contel, not that that can tell on right. What, that's the problem. It's Wednesday just Wednesday night. Is is he moved himself into a like a special tier of Rockets killers, or at least of like post Akeem Rockets killers? Because I, I, I don't want I don't I don't want to go back. He's probably know, up there. I don't uh, want to go back to Akeem time because that's the Carlos Boozer is also on that list. Oh yeah, yeah, that was Marcus Aldridge, Dame Lillard. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah. The 2014. Yeah, Dame Lillard. The 2014 when, when, when Timber, when or, uh, Trailblazers. Chandler Parsons lost them on the screen. And yeah. that, that, but that, I, you know. I I think that Clay definitely definitely is on in that conversation. Uh, and he did it again uh, last night. And, yeah, that that's what it felt like to me. It was, it was a situation of one team that's been in these kind of games. And this is really – I mean, it ultimately wasn't actually for – a lot in the standings. Uh, yeah, it really didn't wise. mean all that much for the Warriors. But it I means, think they get to the postseason either way. But it means a lot when you have Tari Eason saying, Warriors, come out to play. All right. Did you have a problem with him wearing the T-shirt on the bench while not playing? Not really. Because, I mean, if you're going to make the video, like you have to kind of okay. then lean into it. And yeah. uh, my take, was, because Tari Eason was getting... clearly the, the clearly the Warriors players had problems. We don't, yeah. we, don't, we don't have the audio ready, so don't worry about it, Johnny. But Clay Thompson, yeah, Clay Thompson he was up. not happy about uh, that shirt being worn on the sideline. But, I mean, it was it's a situation where I, I feel like when it happened, though, everyone was like, Hell yeah! Like the yeah, sure. Yeah, with the initial, and, with the initial video because I think at the so, time they were down one game, right? Yeah, that what? that's when they had moved it to one. Um, but the the problem ultimately was um, was a that he wasn't playing, but also they made it seem like that Tarisen just missed like this game. Where yeah, it's like, it, it, seemed, it seemed like the Warriors thought like, oh, he's got a grade one ankle sprain. Like he's he, ducking he, him. He could have, yeah, exactly. Like he could have got it out and got on the court. Like, like no, no, he's, no. he's been out for like. <laughs> three months yeah like uh, check the injury report what's going with him is far more severe but i mean he was getting absolutely crushed and i it's like not just not just uh by the golden state warriors but also you know on on uh on social media and uh, by talking heads like us and ultimately i'm like aren't aren't we kind of letting the 12 rockets that are on the court off the oh, hook sure <laughs> by yeah. saying that like Taurus and you gotta you gotta play and back it up if you want to talk smack. Yeah. It's like, well, he had guys that could have backed it up for him. Right? Yeah, his voice <laughs> definitely could have had his back. Guess what? The moment was too big for him. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did. Like, and I don't even I don't even think like in in a perfect world if if Cam and and Shingun were available, I don't even think they make a difference overall. It's it just it just felt like a moment that a, a team in the first year of actually playing for something. Yeah. Because and, and, it would it would, it would have been the same for Cam and Shagoon too, because obviously Cam's a rookie. Shagoon dealt with the same losing under Steven Silas that you know guys like Jalen uh, Green did. So I I don't think it ultimately matters if those guys had even been available. The Rockets look there's there's steps to this, and so they took a massive step from what 22 wins last year. They're they're, uh, they're at Vegas, 38 now. Uh, yeah, right. And their pre, their Vegas projection that this year I think was 31 and a half or 32 yeah. and a half. They've taken a massive step forward, but they're still way more steps to go before they get to where we want them to be and, and that's why like the the chase for the 10 seed i always kind of like i kind of feels kind of like a loser chase doesn't it the 10 seed yeah like i kind of rolled my eyes like th like they're eliminated from the plan oh it's like okay they would have played one more game but uh but the experience is the idea that you would have played well it would have been the warriors but you would have played uh, the lakers more than likely in the 9 10 game and you would get a situation kind of like the one that you got 
on uh, on Thursday night where you have a veteran team that's motivated to and win the game. You've been playing in L.A. It's a big spot, and you got to show up. And on Thursday, I think that the Rockets kind of got that experience of playing an experienced Yeah, that's a good team. point. This kind of was their playing game. <laughs> yeah, so. it, it was their, like, hey, like you said, there's that's levels That's actually a really good stuff. point. Like, the experience, of, like, what they needed as, a, like, a measuring stick to – to kind of get a feel for the moment, what they need to do to get there next year or past that next year, they pretty much already got it. Yeah, it, and it's not a situation where, you know, they're you. It's a measuring stick, and you realize that they're that much worse than the Warriors. It's a measuring stick as far as this is the just enti- experience. This is the type of intensity that you need yeah. to play with. The type, like the type of seriousness that you need to play with in a game that actually means something. And yeah, I I mean they got that experience with any other coach. I probably would be less sunny about like, well, they learned some lessons along the way. Yeah, like if Steven Silas was still the yes, coach, not with, that he would have ever gotten them to this but point. With, but but with how Ime Udoka laid it out in that, and that's what he said publicly in the media. Good point. Good point. <laughs> I think that's, he called him soft through the media. Imagine what he said behind closed doors. Yeah. So I think. I think that it's a situation where, you know, the you kind of give your coach something to get yeah, on he, you I, about. I think I have confidence, like as you're saying that. I hadn't really thought of that angle, but you, you, like other coaches, you maybe you wouldn't feel confident that the right message was being given. Like it might be two rainbows and, yeah. and sunshine. Like, oh, we wasn't were our so, night. It was yeah. so close. It wasn't our night. Like, we'll get them next year. Like, like I may is or he may. I almost got yeah. through the full segment without saying I may. But Ime is, is is a different guy, yeah, and I know MFR. You, you're yeah, soft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I have complete faith, and let, let's follow that up with one quick question before we go to break. And I'm, sure. I I know we're way over. I'm sorry about that, Johnny B. But you you don't acknowledge your tribal chief, so your opinion doesn't matter. Uh, confidence in that that the the the, the Rockets will get to the actual playoffs next year, not just in a playing game, but actually in the eight the eight team bracket. The expectation should be to make the like play a seven game series. So that's whether you're the sixth seed and you don't have to be in the play in or that you're a seven or eight and you need to win one game to uh, get get in. That should be uh, the expectation. And I, I feel I feel pretty good that with um, with the the flashes that we saw from Jalen more recently and Shingun throughout the year and the uh, ability that they'll have to kind of figure it out uh, playing with each other. Um, or maybe they make a big move and then they're shooting up the uh, standings in that way. But, trading for Stefan Diggs? Yes, exactly. Um, I, I, I feel pretty confident. I, I mean, I can't, you know, 75% that they make the, yeah, <laughs> that they make yeah. the playoffs I, next year. Like, I, I, I feel... <laughs> I, I feel I feel good about them being at least in like a seven eight seed sort of yeah. spot where they're one one win from getting in. You also kind of look at the team like the Rockets, obviously with their youth and uh, just kind of where they're at as an organization, kind of the arrow pointing up next to their we're, like game. Warriors and I mean obviously the Warriors just war- pumped war- them the other night. Warriors Lakers it, arrow it, down right exactly exactly. Yeah. All right, we got to get to break on the other side. When we get back on ESPN Radio ninety seven five and ninety two five, we got to talk about the Stefan Diggs trade in the. The maybe the questionableness of the uh, the contract extension, not a contract extension, the contract restructure that he got after uh, the uh, trade was made uh, uh, final. That when we return on ESPN Radio ninety seven five and ninety two five.
This is The Bullpen on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here are the producers of ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, uh, Sean Mapes, whose theme music is this? This is Seth freaking Raw. See, I, I'm going to lose this. I, I, don't, I don't know what Johnny has in store for us for this uh for this uh, wrestling theme music challenge that we're going to do at one fifteen, but I feel like I'm going to lose this, Johnny. I, 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 I oh, actually, you know, I feel a little bit of reservation putting this in Johnny <laughs> Belmer's hand because he is a hater when it comes to professional wrestling. I've been so, impressed with Sean being able to nail. I know these, he's gotten all of him. Got Jay Uso last segment. He got uh, who was it the segment before? I forget who it Roman was. Reigns. Roman Reigns. Yeah, of course. I mean, acknowledge the tribal chief, but. Uh, uh, yeah, Seth Rollins in the main event night of night one of WrestleMania tonight, along with uh, his tag team partner, Cody Rhodes, against the the final boss, The Rock, and our tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Uh, Johnny Belmer, who you got in that match? Are you taking the side of The Rock and Roman Reigns or Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins? I'll take Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Okay, it's interesting. All right. Is he, he is refusing to acknowledge our tribal chief. That's, yeah. what, I'm lear- that's what I've learned from this. He- I can't tell you why I'm taking them. I'm just taking them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I respect that. I, I re- yeah, Johnny is a man who walks to the beat of his own drummer. He's, he's a lone wolf. That's what I think what I've learned here. All right, so let's talk about the Stefan Diggs trade to the Houston Texans and the opposite of an extension that he got um, the, the day after, as I, <laughs> I, I, I mistakenly kind of said going into break. So uh, let's start with the trade itself. Um, when it was made, I mean, I, there, we're not going to play the audio because it's too long, but there was, uh, you know, former Longhorn. Was uh, was it Emmanuel Acho or Sam Acho? I forget. Well, they're both former. I know, but which one oh, actually uh, said the uh, <laughs> Emmanuel Acho? Oh, Emmanuel Acho. <laughs> uh, try to put the idea out there that the Texans got fleeced. Now, maybe the opinion on whether or not they got fleeced gets changed by what they did to Stefan Diggs' contract at the next day. But when the, the trade goes down, your initial thoughts were? I disagree with the Manuel Acho. Yeah. Uh, Hook him. <laughs> respectfully, sir. <laughs> um, no, I, I think I think that the I, – I don't know how you can look at it as as a bad trade for the Texans. Not, not just the fact that, you know, you're getting a guy who basically since his first or second year in the league is just a walking 1,200 yards and yeah. eight touchdowns. Uh, also the fact that, you know, they – when you take the the move in totality with what they've done so far in the draft, they traded out of the first round. They traded that twenty uh, that uh, twenty three overall. Twenty three yeah. overall. They got a second round pick this year, forty two overall, and next year's uh, second from the Minnesota Vikings. Right. And the second that they traded out in this trade is that Vikings. Uh, so they second. basically just traded back. Like what was they, it? Nineteen spots essentially for Stephon for Diggs. Stephon Diggs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and then they got a fifth and a sixth. Uh, right, right. Hey, so not what, even what, like, is were yeah. the fifth and the sixth this year? Uh, the si- I believe the sixth is this year and the fifth is next, or okay. it's the reverse. They're, I know they're not in the same year. Okay, so but, yeah, yeah, but that drops the value of giving up. I mean, not that I care about fifth or sixth round picks, but if you're just looking at pure value, that does drop the value down to like okay, maybe kind of in value gave up a third, not even a second at that point. Yeah, and and so uh, so taking that as a whole, you know, ignoring what they did on Thursday or Friday, Thursday, uh, Thursday, yeah, it was Thursday right after Galan George. Uh, that it got announced. Timing is horrible. Uh, no matter what show I work on, and I work on all of them. <laughs> I mean, I would say, news I, always how, breaks. How, how, how could that happen? You work on every show. News. I, I guess I can't complain too much because Stefan Diggs got traded literally five minutes before oh, uh, Dell show. Yeah, that's true. But still, uh, I, I will still complain. Um, but yeah, ignoring what happened with the contract restructure, I think just the trade in itself, good, good trade. I, I, I don't really give out grades. The Sean Mapes <laughs> stamp of approval. I don't really give out grades on it, but uh, I saw that Jeremy Branham gave it an A. <laughs> well, he is the uh, NFL executive year. Is the, his, one of his Multiple new, times. Yeah. Was, I mean, he's Multiple won. Multiple times for the same year. Yeah, he's won it like 30 times already for this year. It's amazing how often he wins that award. So the other side of it, and this is, I because, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't need to belabor the points you made because I completely agree. I thought the initial trade was was absolutely a, a home run i mean uh, if you're not going to get anybody like stefan diggs uh, you know for however long much longer he has left in the tank um in the second round and especially for a team that's trying to win right now so i thought it was an absolute uh, home run and i do think and that's the kind of the other part of this conversation we'll get into what they did with this contract in a second but the other part of the conversation is like okay what does he have left and i've seen 
ton of people point out, you know, like, oh, his, the second half of, his la- of last season, the the seven games where yeah. uh, people seem to forget, and I didn't because I had him in my most important fantasy league, so I was acutely aware of, uh, you know, w- what it was first half and second half and uh, maybe the, cause, the causes for that. But the offense changed because they changed offensive coordinators midway through the season, and they decided to be a running team. And now you can put some blame on Stefan Diggs for not handling that well because certainly you, we've heard rumblings that he kind of uh, made things worse, and then that's maybe why his snaps got uh, cut. But I, I don't think there was any evidence that his actual game dropped off because when you look at his first half, uh, of last year before they made the change in offensive coordinator. He has games of like 10 for 102, 8 for 111, 6 for 120, 8 for 121, 10 for 100, 9 for 70. I mean, he was still yeah. that guy. There yeah. was there was no drop off there. He didn't he didn't get washed in, in, over the course of uh over the course of a bye week or however right. <laughs> however yeah. it was. So, yeah, I I think that uh it was the offense changing and you know, some people are like, well, they, they started winning games when they changed that offense and Stefan Diggs was still upset. I would counter back with, and it's not really great defense, but Stefan Diggs was upset way before that. Yeah, he's been <laughs> upset for years. It wasn't just because he got, he, he uh, wasn't getting touches. He was touches. mad the year before the playoffs when we saw him MFing Josh Allen yeah, on the sideline. So it's not an issue of getting touches. touches. It's, not, it's an issue of not liking Josh Allen, apparently. And, and that kind of brings up, and, and I, I know we're, we're late to break, but we'll, we'll carry it over yeah, here. Yeah, we can carry You, you know what, let's go ahead and carry over. And before we, because the next se- the next segment's Texans also. So we'll just, we'll just carry over this part of the Diggs conversation on the other the side of the break so texans conversation continues on the other side of the break when hour two of the bullpen starts on espn 97.5 and You're listening to The Bullpen on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. We want that. Oh, I am back on the air as I started to give out a uh, tagline of one of the wrestling matches that Sean was uh, looking at for. I, I think that match was night two of WrestleMania yes. that you were like talking about. The, the six-man Philly street fight. Uh, Johnny Belmer, you got a pick for the six-man Philly street fight. Who wins that? Uh, is one of them from Philly? Uh, I don't know. Probably. Uh, then I don't know. There's six. The, the there's strongest six one. I don't even know who the six people are. I was just. I actually, I was hoping you were gonna say Rocky. 
That, that, that's that's <laughs> I was I was kind of hoping you you were gonna go there, but that's all right. I, I put you on the spot. So as we were uh, talking before we went into the break, and if you want to weigh in on the conversation, give us a call on the HRMP listener line seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Talking Texans now, uh, WrestleMania later, and a whole lot more uh, uh, fun in between. But uh, we we're talking about stuff on Diggs and the, the trade and the uh, the Texans. You know, w- what does he have left? And I think we both agreed that the second half we saw from him, his game log, it w- wasn't indicative of what he actually has left in the tank. It was more about you know him being mad about an offense change than anything else. And uh, I don't I don't expect the. And it, it, well, actually, this kind of leads me to my point. What I, I was I, I loved the trade when it happened, and I had no problem with what they gave up to get Diggs. Where I was a little disappointed and maybe a tad bit worried is what they did uh, the day after by tearing up the next three years of his contract to basically make it a one-year deal. And here, here's why. Like, the the risk and the downside of the Diggs trade is what we talked about. Like, okay, besides his age, is he's obviously had a long tendency of, you know, in Minnesota not being happy and getting basically uh, winding his way out. Uh, Buffalo now has happened again. We've seen him in, in multiple heated exchanges yeah. of Josh Allen on the sideline. So my my problem with it is you, you've now, the, the Texans have now put Stefan Diggs in a situation by tearing up the last three years of his contract where he now has to have a prove-it year, right? Like he's going out in 2024 – uh, looking for one last contract because he's going to be 31. He's obviously can't expect you know multiple contracts yeah. from the remainder of his career. So he's now in a one year prove it situation. Has to produce on the field to get the his final contract. And you're putting him on a team where he's got to share the ball with like Nico Collins and Tank Dell. So my my worry is you've put you put Stefan Diggs in a spot where he's already concerned about the touches. He's already concerned about. You know, being involved, uh, how his involvement in the offense. We saw that in Buffalo. We saw that in Minnesota. We had to share the ball with Adam Thielen, and then obviously the the running the ball last year at Buffalo. And you're now putting that that guy who's made you know uh, or had rants and had um, uh, some issues in the locker room with not getting the ball enough. You're putting him in a contract year where he has to get numbers on a team that's going to spread the ball because they have two dynamic receivers on the field with them in Nico Collins and Tank Dell. It feels like you're kind of if Stefan Diggs is going to go off the rails and become the guy that we're worried about, potentially, it feels like you've put him in this best possible situation to do that. Yeah. Am yeah. I overreacting? No, no. I mean, maybe. But it's, it is it is a good point uh, about the psychology of the move or, you know, the psych, psychological effects, I guess, of yeah. um, the move that they made. Uh, to me, it kind of – it limits the risk overall because, like, you can move on. Yeah, if, but he, see, that's, if you only if he gets upset, whatever, at week eleven, then you only have what six more games where you have to deal with him. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it is, it it makes it easier to uh, get out of it, but it also does kind of limit the upside of to me of you know <laughs> what if it went well and yeah, and that's then, the thing because if he plays well, like there's his his I will say though his old contract was terrible. It uh, was uh, for him, for him, for him, because it, the team had outs every year, right? And he was getting paid like the twentieth uh, receiver salary in the league, and <sighs> so to me, I, I, I was like, oh wow, this contract. I, he basically got, got like the Jock Landale contract. <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> See, I, I, I guess I just didn't get the need to tear it up because, as you mentioned and laid out there, he basically already had that. It's like his his only protection to stay on the roster was the dead cap money a team would have to eat. And Buffalo already ate that. Like, his yeah. only money on the books after this season, before they did what they did, the Texans tearing up the last three years of his deal, was like a $2, two million, like, I don't know, like uh, roster bonus or mm-hmm. something, whatever the hell it was. So he basically already was on a year-to-year. But you had the option as the Texans, if he plays well and if he's a good soldier and doesn't cause the problems that you might be worried about, then you could still keep him here and not have to go and, and pay and compete in an open market for him. And this is where I wonder how much of it is Stefan Diggs realizing that next year was probably his last year to get a you know a big contract, right. uh, a better contract than the one that he just had. And I'm, I'm sure they initially tried to, like with the uh, Joe Mixon deal, tried to um, re- renegotiate and try to you know get some guaranteed money 
in year two for Diggs. And what I'm guessing is Casario didn't want to do that. And so they just made the guarantee for this year bigger and then cut off it the, feels- the rest of it. And I think I feel like that that's what's likely to have happened is that Stefan Diggs wanted Basically, won a new a new contract. Do they anyway. just do him a solid? It feels like because well, you're I, not really doing you're not really doing him a solid. Well, they they, they moved up more money to make mm-hmm. what he makes this year. Uh, you know, obviously a higher total, so that's in his favor. It was basically and, the guarantees that he had, like right. the three million. In so he gets he gets paid a little bit more this year, and he doesn't have the whatever you view the odds at. And maybe the odds were as low as five percent that he the Texans would have kept him next year under the old deal anyway. But you remove any uh, chance of being held to a contract you don't want to be under. So, I mean, both of those are in favor of Diggs as compared to the team, in my opinion. I mean, maybe you maybe you don't want to go as far as saying they did Diggs a favor, but nothing about what they did seemed to help or benefit benefit the Texans other than saving yourself in their mind. Uh, and, and even though I think maybe they actually increased the odds, but they maybe only saved themselves from a blow up. But nothing else about it to me is team friendly. Yeah, there might be something with like the void years uh, in that deal where it kind of they they still have like a ton of cap space even though they made this trade. I saw Texans caps yeah. tweet out that they still have like twenty million dollars in, in yeah. cap room. So I it might be some tricky financial stuff that they're doing that you know maybe yeah I I remember the for, I guess it was just the first day of the trade uh, the trade was made asking. Like, how does this affect Nico Collins? And that might Nico be the Collins other part thing. of it. They, if they might just want to completely get Diggs off the books because they know they're going to make a big Nico they Collins. Have a, they have a short window to have right. uh, a big money receiver next to uh, next to Nico Collins. Right, yeah, because not only do you have Stroud on the rookie contract, but obviously Nico Collins is on the rookie contract. So I think, I think whatever they do with Nico Collins, uh, and I'm guessing it's not going to happen before the season starts now because – I, I mean, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, there's a chance. There's a chance, but I mean, it feels like they might be kind of set here. But that, that, I don't know if this move was made more to. I mean, you could say it was made to make Diggs happy, although I disagree with it, and make sure that he's not a you know a problem in the locker yeah, to, room to get him give him what he wants you on could, day one, just right. To like as a show of good faith. You could say it maybe is to prevent the worst case scenario if you got this unhappy player for the next three years or whatever. Yeah. Or you can make you can make the case that it was to so you have room more room to pay Nico Collins. But I don't know. I just I, I just don't feel good. Like I, I I felt overall fine. Like Nico or not Nico Collins. Um I, I didn't really feel worried about Stefan Diggs being a problem child when they first made the trade because he needed to come here and produce to get that next deal. And maybe that still happens, but I think the I don't know, man. Something about the pressure of this being his only chance because it's now a one year deal and he's gonna have to share the ball with two guys. Like, I mean, Nico Collins was twelve hundred yards last year. Tank Dell before he got hurt was on pace for thousand yards and ten plus touchdowns. I I, I don't know if Stefan Diggs can get to the numbers he wants to get to if the ball is spread out to Nico and Tank, not even to mention Dalton Schultz as much as we think it would be. Yeah. Yeah, that that could again, that could be an issue, but we'll we'll just have to have to see. I do trust the um the uh the leadership of CJ Stroud and uh D'Amico. especially D'Amico Ryan's more than you know, the previous quarterbacks that Stephon Diggs has had. <laughs> and this is quarterback coach combos of of uh, Sean McDermott and Josh Allen. He certainly, I think, yeah, that's a good point. I can't remember. Someone, Case Keenum someone and had, Mike Zimmer. <laughs> yeah, someone had brought that up, like, uh, as a reason why they f- didn't think Diggs would be a problem. Because, like. That's what uh, we had Tyler Dunn on. That's who, maybe uh, what it was. Yeah. Like, working with Zimmer and McDermott, like. I would see there could be a problem with with Diggs relating to those two guys, whereas D'Amico, much younger, former, uh, player. former player, you know, it's not all that long ago that he was in the league. I don't know if the actually, I wonder if Diggs and they didn't, they didn't cross over at all in the I league. I, I, it, it, well, it, if they didn't, it would it, I, it would only have been a difference of a couple of years, at least to a point where Diggs would know, you know, like he would have watched D'Amico play. It wasn't someone that played before he was born. So I, I think you know if there if you are pointing to reasons why um, Diggs might not be a problem here in, in in Houston, I think having a coach that he can relate to, a more player friendly coach because he's walked in those shoes, I think is a big benefit um, from D'Amico Ryan's as far as 
keeping the worst case scenario from happening with Stefan Diggs. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I, I think that's that's kind of what you have to trust in. Uh, trust in being being the case they did. They both played in 2015. There you go. So they did cross over. Well, for different teams, but the, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it would have been Eagles and Vikings. Yeah. Oh, now I kind of want to look up in the break if they actually played against each I other. Can, I can do that. Maybe, right now. maybe, uh, maybe Diggs took a pass across the middle and D'Amico, D'Amico and, went I, high on him. Okay, the, <laughs> the game happened in 2015, not 1995. All right. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, the Vontez Burfick was playing during those times, so you never know. He was getting suspended every week <laughs> during those times. Uh, no, the Vikings and Eagles oh, did not. Damn, play. I, I was hoping we'd have a we'd have video of D'Amico tackling Stefan Diggs or something. So yeah, I, I like it's a very minor concern. It's just it's worth I think something worth watching and monitoring and, and talking about. But overall, this this trade is is just I, I think a complete win for the Houston Texans. Um, I, I maybe I, I I do feel a little uneasy about kind of the one year shot aspect of this uh, putting. Like Diggs, you know, off the field aside, putting like you know his next contract aside, like maybe that's because the overall build of the team for years now has been Nick Casario doing all these one and two year contracts. I, I don't I don't like necessarily the one year shot at this, and then you're kind of putting yourself back in a situation where you got to go find that wide receiver again and doing that for a second round pick. Um, I don't know if that makes you like to trade less, but like. If, if it truly ends up being a one-year deal, and I, I don't see how it wouldn't be, because even if you try to resign him, yeah, next, it, if it goes well, he's too expensive. Like what, 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 if it goes poorly, yeah, he probably doesn't want to come back, and you don't want him back. I I, I heard I, I can't remember who made this argument, like that maybe by doing this show of good faith by tearing up the next three-year contract, maybe you could get him like on a team-friendly deal, a quote-unquote hometown discount the next Ooh. year. Which obviously not hometown. Why, he's why, not would, from, you, yeah. why would he tear up the contract? I don't. Know. I, it, he was it, already on a. He was already on a on a, a hometown yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. already on a great deal. Yeah. No, I, 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 I do. I, I see what you're saying with the like kind of one. You get one shot. Because you're gonna need. You're gonna need like whatever. Uh, he's gonna be gone, and you're gonna need his replacement. You know, next year. So that uh, maybe that's a guy you draft in the second round. Although I, that would be surprising because. <laughs> They have other needs like left guard and yeah. deep tackle and corner. I can't imagine them using Maybe a second, second round pick. Second round next year. Yeah, I know. But then you're putting a rookie in that situation. I don't know. It, it's it, we, we will save some of the the no conversation round. that we had for well for two games. He was really good. We will save some of the conversation we we have for the Houston Texans for next week because they're, they're not topics that are going to expire before we get back. Uh, but when we, we get get back for next segment on the show, ESPN Radio ninety seven five and ninety two five. I'm going to take on Sean. And a one-on-one -on -one challenge, a wrestling theme music challenge. See, who knows the music of sports entertainment for uh, more? Either me, the lifelong fan, or Sean, sports entertainment Sean, as he's known in other, uh, by other people. Uh, see who knows uh, sports theme music more. Johnny Belmer has picked out a lot of songs for us. I think we're going to do three songs each. Is that right, Johnny? So three songs each. See who gets more. Uh, we'll do that when we get back on the bullpen. ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5.
This is The Bullpen on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here are the producers of ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, uh, sports entertainment, Sean. Uh, name the song. I mean, this is not part of the competition yeah. yet, but I'm just this I'm throwing out another test. For the who, love who, of the game. Yeah, for the love of the game. Who is this? The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Now, see, I'm in trouble, Johnny. I, I don't know what you got in store for me, but Sean has got every one of these coming back for break. I, I'm, I'm going to have a tough challenge here from Sports Entertainment, Sean. Uh, welcome back into the bullpen, ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5. You can find us all on Twitter. Sean is at Sean M. Apes. I'm at Sack by BMAC, and Johnny Belmer behind the glass can be found on Twitter at Third Coast Johnny. Coming up next segment, we will be joined by my buddy Kyle King. Uh, did a a you know, wrestling podcast with Kyle when we both worked at a different station here in town uh, for about two years, and he's doing a, a, a live stream on Twitch for night one of WrestleMania, and we'll give you some of those details when we get back. Uh, but he will join us next segment to talk about WrestleMania, and we will finish the show with our uh, Mount Rushmore plus one this week. But Johnny Belmer, if you are ready, uh, let's start the uh, wrestling theme music challenge between Sean and myself. We'll go uh, three songs each, and you, I think you said you have a tiebreaker, so... Uh, We'll see. I, I mean, I'm hoping I can force a tie at this point because Sean's gotten all of them. But uh, who's going first between me and Sean? All right. Well, let's uh, let's let Sean go first. Sean's going uh, first. Okay. You're the all expert right. here. All right. all right. Here we go uh, with song number one. Oh, well. I I appreciate you trying to make it oh. hard oh by going God. with Come on. with with. With someone from B Max era <laughs> of watching wrestling, but this is Hulk Hogan. Uh, see, I uh, okay. I, I mean, I don't know how to how I feel about this. It, yeah, he got it right. He got it right. I, I'm not gonna say the fix is in, but I I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Johnny and I are yeah, beefing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the first round. It's the first round. Okay, you got that right. But uh, I, I, Johnny, I, I felt. A little easy, a little easy, but go ahead and uh, give me my uh, my first wrestling. Like All right, here we go, B Mac. This one is your first song. Okay. That is the theme music of Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus. All right. Good one. <laughs> oh, you had that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm surprised you I, didn't say it before I did. Well, because I respect the game. Um, <laughs> but I see so. So Belmer is doing the thing where he he doesn't want either of us to get skunked, and yeah, so now we know, each man, have I, one on the board. I, I look, I mean, I'm an. I ally. also don't know how hard or easy any of these really are, so <laughs> I, there's that too. I, I mean, I uh, I appreciate the honest. So it's a randomizer, really. Yeah, because he, he they're just names on a page. I, I look, I, I'm an ally, so I'm not going to say uh, getting Hulk Hogan's music was easier than Trish Stratus, but because uh, again, I am an ally. Uh, but I I, I I like Trish Stratus more than I like Hulk Hogan, the for, person. For well, <laughs> okay, yes, yes, Sean. There are multiple reasons why we like Trish Stratus a little bit more than Hulk Hogan. But I don't know. I, I look. I'm not saying Tr Trish Stratus is a no known. She's a Hall of Famer. But still, I don't know. I feel like Sean got the easier one round one. But let's let's start with round two. What do you got for Sean's Excuse round me. two? All right, here we go. Uh, Sean, here's song number two. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, name it, Sean. Well, as as a as a Texan, <laughs> it would be wrong if I got this one wrong. This is Stone Cold Steve Austin. <sighs> yeah, I, I see. I look. what? All right. What? What? <laughs> I didn't even catch on that you're one of me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you hell, you would have a three sixteen shirt. You're not wearing yeah. it today. No, You're not, not wearing right. it today, which I'm a little disappointed. It's WrestleMania Day. You could have oh. worn three sixteen. I feel like Sweet. I wear it every two weeks. That's on, true. On, That's on, true. On, yeah. On this show. I, yeah. On this show. On this show specifically. Yeah. Yeah. You, you probably do. Uh, I don't know, man. You, you went. Uh, Sean got Hulk Hogan we, and so Stone Cold Steve Austin. Of the three ones, they're like, all Hall of Famers. Oh. Uh, they are, but uh, they're of the same caliber. Un undoubtedly, look, this tease ahead maybe for next segment, Mount Rushmore plus one. But if you're doing a Mount Rushmore of uh, uh, sports entertainers, Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold are definitely on the Mount Rushmore. I'm Trish just, I'm just, I'm just uh, Trish, Trish Jazz. Uh, maybe uh, if, uh, is the plus one. It's the plus one. All right, give me my rounds here. I, I, I don't want to say the fix is in, but I'm starting to feel like Johnny's screwing me over here. All right, here we go. Be Mac. Get Montreal song. screw job over here. <laughs> Here's your song number two. Oh God! 
this is uh, okay. I have okay. It's not. It's not Jinder Mahal. It's is is I'm I'm I, is it the uh, oh my god? Is it the Great Khali? It is. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say no wow, matter what, you yeah, nailed it. It is a regrettable Vince McMahon uh, <laughs> character creation. I was trying to. I was. I was walking that line in my head. I was like, okay, this. There was a time when yeah, every every Samoan had a hard head, and every and every <laughs> there was. There was a very regrettable time of wrestling in the 80s and 90s where there's a lot of stereotypes. Yeah, in 2000s. Uh, and Latino, 2010s. Latinos <laughs> were always hot-headed. Samoans had hard heads for some reason. They couldn't be damaged by hitting them in the head with a steel chair for some reason. And but th- and that music certainly leads to it. was like, well, I think I know what part of the world this guy <laughs> came from. So, <laughs> the choices were small for me to pick from. Oh, God, wrestling. Uh, changing for the better is the, the moral of that story. <laughs> is the moral of that story that we got from that? Uh, what is what is this guy? What is this guy? Changing what is this? What is this seven foot guy from India's music going to sound like? Well, it's obviously going to sound like that. What else could it sound like, pal? Uh, it's a good thing that Vince McMahon's out of WWE. All right, round three. We are tied. Man, tied two yeah, two. Yeah, tied two two. All right, of Sean. Round three. Equals. Here's what's what's his uh, theme music here. All right, here's here's your song number three, Sean. Oh come on! Oh, this is our coworkers. Oh my God! Yeah, it's John Granada. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> it's Booker T. Come oh on. my God! Johnny Bell- Hall of Famer. Yeah, five times. Five times. Yeah. Five time. yeah. uh, he actually is. Uh, he actually is a multiple time Hall of Famer. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, addition with being a five time World Champion, also multiple time uh, Hall of Famer. In there individually and, and for, as part of uh, as uh, a t- with his uh, brother as a tag team, the Harlem Heat. Although uh, there again, that wasn't even WWF or or WWE as they're now yeah. called. That was WCW. They took two brothers from Houston, and because they, <laughs> I guess because they're black, made them from Harlem. <laughs> it's a very questionable. Well, some very questionable how times. Else, in how else can you get the alliteration, the Harlem Heat, from I two mean, guys from Houston? Houston Heat. <laughs> It still alliterates. Yeah, it still alliterates. But it well. doesn't work. It doesn't yeah, work. I don't, I don't what? Know. Is Houston hot? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know if you heard that, Sean. It's, uh, it, well, it's really not the heat. It's the humidity. You know? <laughs> the Houston <laughs> the Houston humidity. <laughs> I don't know if that tag team name would have worked as well. The Houston humidity. I don't know I don't know if they would have put butts in the seats, as Tony Schiavone once said. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Sean is up 3-2, but I have one final one to try to force – the tie. Uh, go ahead, Johnny Belmar. I feel like I'm going to yeah, get screwed, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and give me number three. This one's a little tough, B Mac. All if right. you get this, you have earned a tie, and okay. then we'll go to that tiebreaker here. So, all right. Here is song number three for you, B Mac. <laughs> what the hell? Is- this sounds like a pop song from the '90s. This is like Barbie World or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. This- Oh my God! I have no. Aqua. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> uh, God, I'm okay. I, I'm gonna go because wrestling for a certain long time was about stereotypes. I'm gonna guess this was a woman. Uh, this doesn't sound like the music of a man. I have no idea. Uh, but I will go Tori Wilson. Oh. oh my God. So this wrestler's name is Yoshi Tatsu. <laughs> Come on. I, I mean, that's disrespectful. That's, to Yoshi Tatsu. Yeah, yeah, clearly. All right. Do well, you know who I, that is? I have, I have, huh? Do you know who Yoshi Tatsu is? I have no Tatsu idea is? who oh, that okay. is. I, uh, I'm guessing she wrestles for stardom in Japan, well, but I have no a, idea. Yoshi Tatsu is a man. Yep. Oh, it is? Yeah, he is. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. So I, I not only was I wrong with who it was, I completely... I, I I feel like a Granado myself them. by yeah. saying, so oh, much it sounds the, like it's from a woman. Yeah. So much for the WWE getting better, like you were saying earlier. Now you're sexy. Yeah, no, I'm, set, I'm I, setting it back. I was When he started going, well, stereotypically, I think it's a woman. And I was like, is he going to say stereotypically? Like, is he going to try to, like, talk out the stereotypes <laughs> that, he, that, that he's thinking of while he's listening? I did think it was, uh, well, yeah. Okay, so my... I have been defeated. I mean, all credit to sports entertainment, Sean. Acknowledge he is the, me. He, yes, acknowledge, I acknowledge you as the tribal chief 
of the bullpen. Uh, that's a little problematic. Uh, well, it's less problematic than what they did before. <laughs> uh, the tribal chief of the bullpen wrestling theme music challenge. He is our champion. I, I, I do feel like. Johnny Belmer was. Uh, do, we, do we have a strap was, in here? Yeah, well, I almost did bring a title, but I didn't want to unmount it for my wall. Oh, you do, you got a butt the, the lumbar, the lumbar, <laughs> lumbar support. support. Oh wow! That one of the hosts uses. Yeah, uh, I, I, I could guess one of two people probably. Um, maybe maybe we're stereotyping again for people of a certain age. All right, well, I have been defeated. I um, I got two segments left to, to to get through on this show, but I am. I'm a little bit down. Hopefully, I can be picked up by uh, Kyle King. He will join us next. He is a, uh, a former podcast host of mine. Uh, we did a show called The Hill Turn Podcast for uh, three years uh, for another station we worked with. And he is doing a WrestleMania watch along tonight on his Twitch channel. We'll give you those details when we get back. And we'll be joined by Kyle when we get back to talk about WrestleMania on the bullpen. ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5. You're back inside the bullpen with the producers of ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5. We are efforting Kyle King, having a little bit of problem with the phones, uh, but we will hopefully uh, get that taken care of. While we are waiting for Kyle, we will... Uh, uh, I, I'm curious, Sean, as, as, as we, we get to WrestleMania night one, um, there's obviously been a joke about, uh, you know, you, you becoming a fan of the product, but it's, it certainly seems like yep. you've got, <laughs> I, I think people caught, uh, caught, uh, caught into uh, a little bit okay. of the sarcasm. So are we uh, going to break, uh, break kayfabe? Oh yeah. Break kayfabe. kayfabe. Um, um, okay. See, okay. That's, that's, oh, okay, sorry. That looks like we might not be able to make this happen. There is something going on with their phones. Uh, that is unfortunate. Uh, the dangers of live radio. Although it looks like there's someone on the line now, I I can't tell. This is yeah. This is this is fun. Uh, but anyway, so but it it does you. All jokes aside, it seems like you're a little bit more a little bit interested this year uh, to watch for WrestleMania at least with the uh, the main event storylines. Yeah, I th I think what the what the WWE did by bringing in The Rock, and I don't know how much of it was a um was a like. I don't know, not, I don't want to say like a desperation move versus a like PR move from the rock on the rock side of thing. Cause things had not been going well for the rock as like a movie star. And so I wonder how much oh, of this was, they, it wasn't going for well for him as a movie star, as far as like the movies he was making were, uh, universally panned <laughs> <laughs> even the fast the, what, for, I, how for, long has he been out is he yeah he, he hadn't been in the he last hasn't been the last uh, how many fast and furious movies seven or eight oh okay so the last two he hasn't been in which is very funny um and and so there's you know but with the like black adam stuff and all the uh you know he's always in some sort of like this man who is unstoppable gets pushed to his limits um so yeah i i think that there is some oh, that's true black adam was terrible yeah there's some level of um you know trying to get back to his roots as far as red notice i'm just now Man, looking i at don't the even remember what red notice was. jungle cruise yeah. oh that was a probably because he's done what like five dozen movies with kevin hart was that a kevin hart one uh no that was an emily blunt one Oh, okay. uh, no, you're thinking Jumanji and yeah, yeah. Central Intelligence. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think some of it was like, hey, getting getting the magic back as far as just getting the rock uh, for the rock, kind of getting himself back, getting some good. Yeah. Like, let me go back to what I know I can do. And then it, you know, putting him in this, uh, you know, this storyline, just uh, just boom, it all like kind of clicked into place. It certainly has clicked into the place. One of the things I was going to ask Kyle, we're, we're, we're still trying to make it work, but it looks like the phones are going to be a problem today. Uh, but they've, uh, WWE has sold out, I think it's now 14 straight TV shows. So that between Raw and SmackDown, they've sold out an NBA arena 14 times in a row. So this, this storyline, I mean, I don't know when the last time they did something like that as far as selling out that many huge arenas in a row. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you exactly. It was probably in the Attitude Era. Hell, even tonight, I don't know what the ticket, what ticket situation is tonight, uh, but they will have been damn near capacity for sure two nights in a row in an NFL stadium. So certainly uh, the storyline is working. But, man, it's just as, a, as a, someone who grew up with uh, and remembers when Rock debuted in 1996, um, as a as a as a babyface that went by Rocky Maivia, and everyone hated him to the point of chaining "Die Rocky Die," and then obviously him transforming himself into the character that would be, go on to be known as The Rock. Seeing him get back to that, these promos the last month have just been. I don't I don't know how much you've got to see. I know you got to see the the bit where he uh, he attacked Cody Rhodes after the cameras went off. Yeah, uh, which so completely unprofessional. Um, this is still a business. Dude. Still, it's still a business, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if uh, how much of these promos you've gotten to watch, but he's he's been he's been right back in in mid, in, you know, nineteen ninety nine form as as someone who will go down as one of the greatest promos in the history of the business. Yeah, and, and that you know, normally when a guy who's he's got to be in his fifties now, right? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely in his fifties. I don't know exactly how old, but yeah. Normally, it's a little bit of like, all right, kind of. We we get the the either you're playing on nostalgia or you're kind of uh, you you're running out of ideas, so you're just going back to old ideas. Sure. This is like a 
like this actually adds his presence in this like adds something that's a good point because a lot of times when you know older wrestlers come back it's like okay there's no story here really no one was clamoring for it it doesn't make sense for where they're going in the mm -hmm. company you're but blocking someone you're blocking someone but being involved with his cousin playing into the storyline of the family's dominance over the industry uh since roman reigns became the champion in 2020 it, yeah, it's done, it's been the exact opposite. It's not taking away. It's actually adding to and making the whole thing better. Yeah. So last, just to, uh, I guess if for if for breaking kayfabe, uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I I am. You watched what? You watch snippets maybe of last year's WrestleMania. Yes, just uh, to be a uh, good team teammate to you. <laughs> I felt like I owed it to you. To uh, what? Do you remember what you watched? Was it the uh, main event with Ro Roman and Cody? I watched that one. I watched Edge and uh, uh, Finn Balor. Yes, and uh, yeah, that was bloody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Finn, Finn got. Uh, I think it was he had to get like seven staples in his head. Yeah, that 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 was pretty nuts they kept just pulling out weapons from under the yeah, uh, yeah it was the hell in a cell match yeah, yeah. which I, I don't know why the wwe always keeps weapons <laughs> under the under it the, is a good under. question it's like you know they sometimes you know like i get like sometimes you you would have maybe sort of bottles of water down under there for the announcers yeah. maybe you like the I, I get some equipment the, the, the but like the tables and chairs kind of make sense maybe you need it like the, the maybe the ringside table yeah. gets broken now you need a new table what I don't get is sometimes they reach under the ring and there's a bat wrapped in barbed wire. What <laughs> what practical use was there for the barbed wire bat to be underneath why, the ring? Why why do they need that in Salt Lake City of all places? <laughs> I don't. Say <laughs> so, hey, sometimes the Mormons get feisty. You gotta <laughs> I, fight your way out. Historically, of the arena. yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so I I watched uh, I watched that and then um, and then I guess just working with you for another year. Uh, it just it, the the slow exposure uh, to over, it over time. I wore you down. Yes, and, and then um, mix that with this storyline, which like I already kind of I knew like the basics of because I watched last year's main right. Event. Yeah, it's 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 an extenu it's an extension of the story, not a, a the, completely new story. And then you throw in the rock, and so it's just like absolutely just like is you know it's like a chemical reaction going off. Yeah, it's Go gonna be. I mean, this is one of the things we would have talked about with Kyle, but I fully, you were, I think you were asking me in a break a few, a few minutes or a couple segments ago about like what the stipulation was or what the, re, what the reason for the yeah, tag why, match tonight. Why is there? Yeah. Yes. And, and so I fully, cause I mean, obviously this is not breaking news, but there's always a build up to get to like the ultimate payoff. That's kind of the point of when wrestling is booked. Well, that's the point you, you put obstacles in, in the way of the baby face. He, he, you build up sympathy, you build up sympathy, he gets beat up, get beat up. Then he finally overcomes and everyone's happy, right? It's, it's basic storytelling. So I, I fully expect the rock and Roman reigns to win tonight. Because if if they win, then they get they put the match against Cody Rhodes and uh, when his taking when him taking on Roman Reigns on night two, they put quote, <laughs> this is fun, just fun wrestling stuff. But that match then becomes Bloodline Rules, which I have no idea what the hell Bloodline Rules oh, is. I, that was going to be a yeah. question that yeah. I asked. No, no, there's no there's there's been no definition as to what <laughs> qualifies as Bloodline Rules. The only thing I could take away from it is it's just a renaming of the classic, like, you know, no holds barred, which oh, basically okay. means you can do anything. The re wrestling has a thousand ways to describe the same match. No holds barred, no DQ, street fight. All these things are the exact same match. <laughs> they just call it something differently. Uh, so, yeah. So, But I think they do that because the storyline, uh, as you mentioned, that being one of the matches you watched last year with Cody Rhodes and Everyone thought he was winning the match last year, myself included. Vegas thought it. Everyone thought Cody Rhodes was going to, quote, unquote, finish the story and beat Roman Reigns last year. And then, holy crap, Roman kept it. And we were all kind of scratching our head with what they were doing. But now you've had a year for Cody Rhodes to build up and get back to this point. And then to have the opportunity tonight to have all members of the bloodline kicked out from uh, ringside for his title match if he wins the tag match. Only for them to lose, and now he's got to come over yeah. the, all the obstacles again all in one. Yes. Yeah. So I, I fully expect that to be happening. I, I think that match on on Sunday in the main event when when Roman takes on Cody is going to be full of so shenanigans. I have a question. Um, what other either it can either be tonight or tomorrow night. What is like another? Sell me on another one of these. Uh, 
of these matches? Uh, I, I would sell you which, on. Which one are you most excited about? Well, see, it, I, I think the easiest one to sell you on was, would be a one, one that you've already mentioned. There's a six-pack um, tag team match that's a ladder match. It's just going to be, it's gonna be, you know. Chaos. Uh, it's just going to be chaos. There's yeah. going to be 12 guys fighting in and around ringside with ladders and chairs and stairs and tables. And it's just going to be absolute chaos. If, if for, for any non-wrestling fan, you just want to tune in and watch something, you know, freaking crazy, Tune in and watch the uh, six, the, yes. six, the uh, six pack tag team challenge matches for the tag titles. It'll be Judgment uh, Day versus the Awesome yeah. Truth versus the New Day versus hashtag DIY mm-hmm. versus New Cat Republic versus A Town Down Under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of the tag teamers are not great. A Town. Like going with six is pretty aggressive. I don't think it's easy to come up with six good names of anything. Yeah, uh, kids. Yeah, pets. <laughs> That, that's, segments that's what <laughs> i don't think that's why possible. that's that's why i stopped at one kid's like i i'm out that, that's the only name i had like like Deal I'm, me I'm, out. I, I, I washed my hands with this the other one and i think i mentioned this to you uh last year and i i, I don't think you watched it uh but um you would i think you'd ask a similar question last year's like well if there's one match that's going to be amazing it's going to be this one so i'll basically recommend the same one again um but and this is all kind of you know preferences on you know not all wrestling is the same as far as you know different styles the same thing with any i'm going to use air quotes johnny sport any same thing with any sport there are different some teams are run heavy some teams are pass heavy some wrestling is air you know uh you know acrobats and some wrestling is you know more uh what they would call strong style where there's a lot of they try to blur the lines with a lot of chopping and, and hitting that you know looks and sounds real and there's one guy that excels at that. His name is Gunther, and uh, he's gonna have he's gonna defend the Intercontinental Title against Sami Zayn. That match, if I had any, if I was gonna give like a pick to steal the show from a match that isn't one of the main events, that that would be the one. That that match is gonna be. You're gonna feel for Sami Zayn as he's getting chopped to hell. You're gonna see the. You're gonna see the the the. The handprint, yeah. the handprint of Gunther's hand on Sami Zayn's chest. You will feel his pain because they do. That guy does a great job of blurring the lines. Like, okay, I see how he faked that one. I see how he, I don't know how he faked this one. <laughs> Gunther, he might have just had to eat yeah, that. One. Yeah, exactly. Gunther does a really good job of that of, of making you buy in. Like, okay, all that other stuff, I could see how they did that one. That I'm not sure. That one might have <laughs> legit hurt. And Gunther does a really good job of that. So I think that'll be a really good match tonight. All right, but uh, all right, we got one segment left. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to talk to Kyle King because you know hashtag phone problems. Uh, uh, but we will make an effort. Uh, I don't know when the next, maybe I don't know, maybe SummerSlam. I mean, jo- Johnny Belmer knows when all these wrestling yeah. pay-per-views are. We'll we'll let him help handle the scheduling of that. Uh, but we when we get back on the other side of the break, ESPN Radio ninety seven five and ninety two five. Uh, our last segment will be Mount Rushmore plus one, the award winning groundbreaking segment. Uh, We'll close the show with it next on ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5.
Welcome back in ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5. This segment, 100% free from phone shenanigans. We don't have to rely on the phones for this segment, thank God. Because uh, I don't know if you could tell in that last segment, but we kept trying to call out and it would like reroute the call to come back into us. I don't know what witchcraft happened with our phones, but we we're going to have to get an engineer involved. So sorry for that. We might have had people trying to call in earlier in the show yeah. as we kept giving out the number, but they couldn't get in. So if that was the case, I apologize for that. Uh, we will get our engineer involved and have that uh, sorted out by uh, Monday when all the uh, main lineup gets back in. But we're going to finish the show uh, this week with Mount Rushmore plus one. And it sounds like we're all doing uh, lists uh, revolving around the world of sports entertainment, the world of pro wrestling. Yeah, well, uh, of course I am. I mean, you're sports inter- – I mean, yeah. look, you are – the only man to ever win the bullpen wrestling theme song challenge. The the one and only champion. The one and only. So I mean, I, I again, I acknowledge you as the tribal chief of that event. So, uh, Sean, as the tribal chief, would you like to decide the order in, of which we will go today, giving our Mount Rushmore yeah, plus ones? I, I want to know. I know. I want to know what John's. You mean hater ass John? Yes, oh. as a wrestling <laughs> hater, I want to know what his wrestling related Matt Rushmore plus one is. I hope that doesn't Top five stick. Top reasons B-Mac. wrestling is stupid. I, I don't want hater ass John to stick at all. So <laughs> stop saying it, okay? All right, fine. Hater ass Domer. Oh damn. Okay, so I'm going first. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. You're okay. going first. Uh, so I made my list this morning uh, when I realized that this event was happening uh, today. I didn't know the whole show was going to turn into to wrestling. So uh, oh, here's, that's not fair. Here, it was here, the entire show. It, it, basically, uh, here is my <laughs> top five uneducated WWE wrestlers of all time from memory. Uh, <laughs> Wait, are you are you saying these these are the top five most uneducated wrestlers? <laughs> no, no, it's from my uneducated, uneducated, uneducated point of view. I know, I know. Yeah. but the way you phrased it, I thought that. Yeah, Don't try to get me. Okay, <laughs> I'm All not right? trying to get you. I just found it funny because the way it was phrased could be like these are the biggest idiots to ever. Anyway, okay, well these very fine, smart wrestlers. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you my uneducated uh, top five here. Okay, uh, number five, I got Kurt Angle. Okay. Um, I sure. just, uh, back in the day, seen a few of his matches, liked him. Uh, now, number four, John Cena. I know him mostly from the You Can't See Me thing, which is sure. uh, and interesting. And movies. Yeah, and movies. Yeah. Uh, number three, I got Booker T, H-Town, Stand five Up. Five-time, five-time, Absolutely. Five uh, and then I couldn't decide between the last two. Uh, because I am, I put the Big Show at number two. I am a big Big Captain Show guy, Insa- Captain yeah. Insano from uh, from the Water Boy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I ended up settling on the Undertaker for number oh. one because, again, H Town stand up. Thank you. That is my all time favorite wrestler. So you won me back, Johnny. I will no longer yes. call you, except for this time where I'm about to say, I will no longer call you Hater Ass Johnny. You can now rest. Except in for peace. the time that I just called you right now, Hater Ass Johnny. But after this time of calling you Hater Ass Johnny, I will no longer call you Hater Ass Johnny because you included Undertaker in your list. That was well done. Thank you. John. He, he can now rest in peace. <laughs> can, oh, John. <laughs> well done. Sports Entertainment, Sean. So are you going second? You're, you're coming up with yeah. the order today. Uh, I'll go second as okay. the champion, and then you go last. Hey, I, it feels like the champion should be the main event, but it's your world, so you go ahead. No, I just want, you know. I wanted to go in order of how we finished. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, biggest heels in sports. Oh, I like it. Okay. Yes, the biggest heels. Heels for uh, those uh, uneducated like John Belmer when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to the world of wrestling. When it comes to the world of wrestling, <laughs> are the bad guys. Uh, I feel like one of them played in Houston just a couple nights ago. <laughs> he sure did, <laughs> Steph Curry. <laughs> As a Houston Rocket fan, no, it's it's. Even more enraging because he is a baby face for the rest of the league. That's true. But for my team, the biggest heel there is, Steph Curry. Coming up next, it's... Uh, I, I think these two are in tandem because they kind of ran the sport uh, for a while. It's Bill Belichick and Nick Saban. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. They both that, ran... They, they Love ran, to hate them. They ran professional and college football. Yeah, they got lots of heat. For basically my entire life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Belichick also just—he just seems like a heel. Oh, he just, very he much has, so. <laughs> uh, and another coach, Coach K. Ooh, or, yeah, another it, good one. It, it, most hateable, heat. most hateable. He's got a very punchable face. Yes, most hateable. I, I mean, I would person pu- in sports. Yeah, I wouldn't punch an old man. He's pretty old now, but mm. just in general, punchable face. Mm. I, <laughs> I, Sean, I, Sean's, Sean's keeping it on the table. I won't say I wouldn't punch <laughs> Coach K. I'm not saying I wouldn't. Uh, and last but not least, the biggest heel of them all. Who hopefully his his evil reign will come to an end this weekend. 
Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh wow! No no respect yeah. for the final boss. I mean, a, a lot of respect for him as a heel. But man, I mean, he See, beat up he beat up Cody Rhodes after the show. The cameras were off. <laughs> well, at least one and camera was rolling well, the, because we saw the footage. <laughs> I mean, technically, one camera was rolling. They didn't tell that one camera How guy did to no stop one rolling. Step in? Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, we said it last week. The show is over at ten o'clock, Rock. But at 10 o'clock, any problems you have, Cody Rhodes, you have to save it for SmackDown on Friday. <laughs> Be a professional. It was not nice for him to beat up Cody after the cameras. No. So some of them went off. And then to call out his his mother, Mama Rhodes. And they, what, oh, yeah, that was that was not pretty. I feel I feel bad for Cody. Hopefully he'll get some revenge, his, uh, some vengeance Biggest tonight. Um, all right, so my uh, Mount Rushmore plus one. Uh, these are all... I wanted to, uh, uh, we've talked about some like kind of cliche and like, you know, bad little, uh, bad things of, of, of wrestling. And I wanted to kind of play into that with like the kind of the, the most, like if I were to tell Johnny as the, as the, the non-lover of wrestling or you, Sean, as a newer wrestling fan, like a name of a person, you go, oh, that guy's obviously a pro wrestler. Like you, I wouldn't have to tell <laughs> okay. you anything about them. The most pro wrestler yeah. names. <laughs> but literally my list is most wrestling names. <laughs> but uh, there is one little caveat. These are people who are all have had matches at WrestleMania since tonight is at okay. WrestleMania. So I'm not going outside the box of WWE. But the most wrestling names that I could think of okay. that had matches at WrestleMania, that is my Mount Rushmore plus one. Uh, first, King Kong Bundy. Yes. Like, I tell you, I was like, what, what does King Kong Bundy do? It was like, well, he's a professional wrestler. Like, clearly. Yeah, of yeah. course. King and, Kong. and I want to watch him wrestle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, next one on the list, uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. <laughs> how is he Brutus the Barber? Because he beefcake. carried around, like, shears. But how would, is he, he not would... Brutus the Beefcake Barber? Yeah, well, because he was an actual, like, like part of his gimmick was he was a barber. who He was also a beefcake. I don't know. It was the 80s, Sean. I don't what know. Do you Sean want makes me? sense there on that one. Yeah, I, it, it, it was it was a questionable Mr. name. Mr. McMahon, for... I have one note. <laughs> yeah, that's, one, me, well, that's me in the uh, meeting. Well, Mr. McMahon needs a lot of notes for things that have gone on, but uh, that is certainly one. Uh, one, this is a tag team. So both the tag team name and the people in it, uh, Axe and Smash from Demolition. I mean, those guys, I mean, if I told you, what are Axe and Smash from Demolition? You're like, well, they, they, they wrestle. And they, <laughs> yeah. they, they clearly wrestle. It's either that or like a super hard rock band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. They, or they're in Pantera. Yeah, they, they, those, those yeah. are the only two One options. half of Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one on the list. Um, it's actually another tag team. Hawk and Animal from Legion of Doom. <laughs> Hawk? Hawk in animal. Oh, I guess like yeah, the H- bird. Yeah, well, yeah, H A W K. That's I was one person. Hawk-a-loogie. No, 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 no. Hawk and animal from Legion of Doom. Okay. And uh, I believe that's the Bundy Beefcake, Axe and Smash, uh, Legion of Doom. Yeah, I got one more on my list. I have a lot of honorable mentions, but we got to get out. Uh, last one on the li- list: Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he was at, at one at sometimes a baby face as a pro American sergeant, and other times at that one point in the nineties when the Iraq War was going on. Uh, Desert Storm, he turned to a Iraqi sympathizer because he because tur- <laughs> he turned into a heel, <laughs> and he. <laughs> I think I killed Sean. That'll do it. We're way over. Bullpen ESPN Radio 97.5 and 92.5. We will be back next week. Have a great weekend, weekend, Houston, and go watch WrestleMania. 